Welcome to Saxophone Disassembly and Reassembly Part 2, which will basically be Saxophone Reassembly. Uh, first thing I'd like, you, like to do is back the camera out and show you that I have taken my keys and organized them by the groups we talked about when we're disassembling. We have the bell keys, the palm keys, we have the A-flat, or the E-flat, the C, and the F-sharp here. We have side keys, octave key, left hand, right hand. I've got the neck octave over here with the neck, and the G over there kind of by itself, so because it really doesn't go with anything else. And I have them laid out just so that they're easier for me to grab when I go to put things back together. So I'll start with getting the sheet of paper out of the way and zooming in the camera. First thing I'll start with is I'll go ahead and I'll put the neck octave key back on. Um, when I took it apart, I used the wrong screwdriver. Um, I just didn't want to stop and start over again and get the right screwdriver. This time, to put it back together, I have the correct screwdriver. This is the Allied number 4 screwdriver. Works really well on these size of hinge rods. Just a matter of pull out the hinge rod drop the key in. It's got a flat spring that rides in a cradle on the neck. Put in the hinge rod. Tighten it up. Your, your basic uh, key installation. So, now we're going to start putting together the main body of the saxophone here. And typically when I'm assembling a saxophone I will start with the right hand keys and I have those keys right here. They are the D, the E, the F, and the F sharp. And those keys make up the right hand uh, stack of a saxophone as they make up the right hand of a flute. And if the ring keys on a B flat clarinet had names, those would be the names of the ring keys on the right hand, it would be the right hand of a bass clarinet, right hand of an alto clarinet, alto flute, piccolo, pretty much, um, well, any instrument that's based on a berm fingering system. Okay, so to mount that, I'll go ahead and pull out the hinge rod, If I were doing any kind of final assembly on the saxophone, I would put a drop of oil on the hinge rod, work it through each key, adding oils I need it so that the keys are nice and lubricated. But for the sake of this exercise, we're going to skip that step. First key I'm going to put on is the F-sharp key. F-sharp key is what's called a compound key. It has a section of hinge tubing right here, then it has empty space with a bar and more hinge tubing. So this is a compound key, and that's the first key I'll put on. F-sharp. Can hook up its spring once you got it on there. Eh, maybe, maybe not. Makes it a little awkward to put the other keys on. So if I leave it unhooked, it's a little easier to put the rest of the right hand. I'll put the F key on. I kind of have to lace it in between springs there. That spring for the for the B flat key here is kind of in the way. I can go ahead and engage that spring as I slide it in there. Do the same with the E key. Got to kind of get that in there. And note that they're the the feet of these keys have to go underneath the bar across the back of the F sharp key. Okay. And then the last key is going to be the D key. And once I've got the hinge rod in there, I can tighten it up, hook up any springs that aren't yet hooked. And now we have the right hand on the saxophone. Okay, from here, since I'm at this end, I might go ahead and just put the, uh, the F-sharp key on. 
and that's between pivot screws. Again, I work in groups of keys, so what group I put on first oftentimes is just a matter of uh, preference to the individual saxophone. And this has got headed headless tapered pivot screws, so if I put them in too tight, the key doesn't properly operate. I'll push it down and it'll just stay open. So what I'll do then is I'll get it so where it's tight enough that it stays open and back it just until it works nice and smooth. Okay. And I'll go ahead and install the E flat and the C. Those springs are easy to hook up after they're on. E flat is sprung shut. C is sprung open. I'll go ahead and flip it around. And at this point, I want to go ahead and put the right hand on or the left hand on. Pull out the hinge rod, and in this saxophone, the left hand is the C. Also notice that's a compound key. The B, the A, which may have an extra section of hinge tube on it if you have that to sign. The B flap, which is another compound key. And in this design, the G sharp is also on that mechanism. I'll start with C. Then B. Hopefully. Then B flat. Then a, and possibly it's extra piece of hinge tubing if you have that design. Okay. And then next will be G sharp. Now I'm going to bring the camera in real close here and we're going to look at something. Trying to get everything positioned where I want it. And get the camera to focus. Okay. You'll notice there's a round spring coming out of this post. And a round spring coming out of this post. Now the longer spring out of the upper post engages the B-flat spring. There's a small notch there on that lever that that will engage. And then this spring engages the notch in the G-sharp key. It's very important that we get those hooked up properly. Okay. Because those springs will tend to interfere with each other if they're not properly engaged. Okay, run the hinge rod in there. We can see that the B flat spring is in a notch on a key arm. Let me get that up there where we can see it. and a notch in the key arm right here. 
and a G sharp spring engages a notch, a cradle, and a key right here at the end of my spring hook. So the G sharp is sprung open for now. That will change later. See, twisting it around. See, there's where the spring comes into the key right there. And the B-flat key, of course, is sprung open. Okay? It's really important that that mechanism is assembled properly. One of the problems that will happen with this design is the young musician will reach in and pick up the saxophone out of the case right in the middle of the body, and they'll pop that B-flat spring out, and it'll monkey, monkey up the whole works. All right. Now I can't put, might make sense to put the G key on, but I really, it is not a good idea to put the G key on yet because the G key interacts with the octave mechanism. And this foot of the G key, which determines how far the G opens, actually sets on top of the upper octave key cup. So it's very important that we put the octave key on first. And this is one of the mechanisms on the Yamaha that's a little bit more challenging. Because of its basic disassembly form, it breaks on a down into two components. The lever and the actual key itself. Notice there's a pin on the side of the key arm here, and there's a fork on the lever. That pin needs to be in that lever, and then these two pieces of hinge tube line up and the rod goes through there. So, to get that onto the saxophone, like that, so that everything lines up properly. Okay. There's more comfortable ways to do this, but it's not conducive in to doing it on this camera. So I have to kind of manipulate that all into place there. And now I can run the hinge rod in. Tighten that screw. And engage the spring. Probably easier to turn it over and push the spring, okay? Now at this point, I'll start adding side keys. I'll start with the side B flat. Install the side B flat lever. I can engage that spring before I have the side B flat. Put the side C key on there. More than likely not going to engage that spring until I have the C key on or it'll just flop open under spring tension. Although it looks like it's going to cooperate. Then I can mount the side B flat and the side C keys. Again, like the octave key, there's a pin that goes in a fork.
Oops. Do the same up here with the side C key. And then once I have both of those in there, I can go ahead and tighten the hinge rod. Next key I'll go ahead and slip on is the high E key. I can hook up the spring as I put it on, or I can hook it up after I get it on. In this key, it really doesn't matter. Spring is nice and accessible here on the Yamaha. Okay, now I have my right hand, my left hand, all my side keys, the octave key, the E flat and the C key. I can at this point then go ahead and mount the G key. Again, the foot of the G key sits on the octave key, so we did have to put the, uh, the octave mechanism on first. Okay. And we can hook up that spring. I see that I got a little ahead of myself and forgot to hook up the springs in the left hand so that all the keys function properly. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to the bell keys. And the bell keys have a couple little bit of complications with this design. The biggest compl complication is actually the C-sharp key. Uh, it's a two-piece key. There's a lever and an actual key with the pad in it. Um, it's pretty critical that we put the lever on first, basically because if you put the key on first, you need three and a half hands to get the lever on. And not only do you have not have that many hands, you don't have room to put them in there. If we look down, look close here at the mechanism on the body here. We'll see that this is the post, the pivot screw that holds the bottom of the end of the lever, and there's this spring over the top of it. And that lever needs to slide in there, be on that pivot screw, and engage the spring into this notch on the back of the key arm. It has to pretty much all be slid on there and engaged in one step. So getting it lined up with the pivot screw and then using a spring hook to move the spring until it's properly engaged is really the best way to do that. Then I can move it into place. Loosen the pivot screw on the other end. and have the key now, the lever now securely mounted. You'll notice at this, at this point with this mechanism that the lever itself is at rest when it's hitting the cup of the D key. It's not going to stay there. Because the next thing we'll do is remove this hinge rod. Press down on the C-sharp lever. Place the C-sharp key under the key guard and put the fork of the key over the pin on the lever. Okay. 
I'm going to put in the hinge rod. And put that hinge rod back in there. Now the C-sharp key functions properly. Now, you may hear that it's slapping into the uh, key guard here. Don't worry about that now. That's not going to be a problem because the key height of the C-sharp key is actually determined by the G-sharp lever that we put on, haven't put on yet. So that noise will go away. Okay. Next thing we'll do is we'll take our bell B key, slide it onto its pivot screw on its post. And mount it using the pivot screw on the post at the middle of the body. And engage the spring. So that key is sprung open. Pivot screw is just a little tight. Need to back that out just a little bit. Still a little tight. So that it operates nice and free. And remember the bell B flat is held on by the same hinge rod as the G sharp lever. So we need to install the G sharp lever. It's got two tabs on it. Those tabs need to rest under the spatulas for the C sharp and the B keys. So that needs to be laced underneath. It's usually a good idea to engage the spring before you mount the lever. Work that pivot screw into there. Put the B flat key on. Engage its spring, and then tighten the hinge rod for the G-sharp key. And now we have all the bell keys mounted. Now while it's laying on this side, I can just turn it around. Drop the F rocker in there. Flip it over. Take out the hinge rods for the D. F and D sharp palm keys. I'll just lay them on my bench in order. So I know which one goes where. Always want to put the same hinge rods back where they came from. Start with the F, and I'll just push the spring in for now to hold it in place. The D sharp. And the D. And then once I have them in, it's no problem to just go ahead and tighten the screws. And our saxophone is now completely reassembled. Okay. End of part two.